What's going on, everyone? This is Ishmael from Dad Is Not It Now, changing the narrative for men of color and fatherhood, but also changing the narrative about the things I care about. Uh, before we go into this new episode, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor for this episode, VT Heroes, and I'm going to let them take over. Hey, love. I think it's your turn to do the dishes tonight. No. It's your turn to do the dishes. How about we settle this? Fine by me. Yo, there whenever it matters and even more when you feel like it doesn't Protect you so you never feel like you wasn't Know I'm right alongside you, here but that I'm behind you But always got you, end of discussion, nothing means more First one to offer his shoulders for what you preach for Thought I saw the eyes of the world until I seen yours And know that I ain't see a better view yet I'm with whatever, so don't ever you fret Know that you covered, not a hurdle or a heartbreak To change what a partake Cause none of them won't ever get comfortable in your walkway My job is to aware you, fully loaded, prepare you For all of the above that I'm never letting get near you But still in all, give you every advantage I found Couldn't find a better fit for them, along with my crown And since the baton was passed, I've been down Cause failing's not an option, and dad is not a noun, not at all Happy New Year, everyone. This is Ishmael from Dad is an Dad is Not a Now, all about changing the narrative and also about also about changing the narrative about the things I care about. And a one and a thing that I definitely mm. care about is my special guest today, the one and only, my brother. I love him. Boy Melson. Boy Melson, how's your heart today, brother? I love you too. And thank uh, you for having me on here. Thank you no. always. Thank you always for wanting to try to promote whatever endeavor I'm after <laughs> at a given time. Really no, it's, it's, it. it's all love, man. And what you're doing and what you're always doing is always impactful. Um, the world may not know, but I know, and I want the world to know that you're doing great things. <laughs> um, before we get into why I have you on, tell a little bit about yourself. Who is Boyd Melson? Mm. My goodness. So I would say I'm somebody who believes in kindness, who believes in dealing with less so others can have. And I don't mean so others can have more. It just means so others can have. I believe in showing your heart and being honest and the strength in making yourself vulnerable. Uh, I, I believe in remembering why we do things that we do, remembering moments we have and practicing remembering them so we never forget why things were so important to us in the first place. And I, I've spent my life, I boxed professionally and I, um, I've been to Iraq, I went to West Point, I'm a major in the Army Reserve. Do a lot of passion work with helping, diff working with different demographics that are getting hit in the mouth by life. And I'm a screen, I'm a script writer for a movie. We have a movie. The teaser should be out this month. The starring Shaw, Showtime Sean Porter, two-time welterweight champion of the world. And it's about a boxer, and that movie is dedicated to mental health and veteran suicide. And I released an album maybe three, two months ago. And it's 
a motivational speaking music album. It's the first one I've ever released, but it, I don't really refer to it as a motivational speak music speaking album. I refer to it as an inspirational speaking music album. And that's more in alignment with my ways about me. I don't, I don't really know about firing up somebody to get them to get more out of themselves. I kind of know about trying to make someone believe in something and get curious about what they about themselves more curious about their own life and but see a vision and reflect on their lives i believe i think i have a knack for that to help people reflect on on their lives and experiences that they've gone through and this has me here right now with you yeah. And, and I appreciate that too. And the one thing is I admire is your humanity, especially people that you never m met before, the, the willing to have patience and listen to people. Mm -hmm. And I think what makes you so unique is that from day one that I met you is that you feel that, 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 that privilege to serve. So talk about what does serving others mean to you? serving others and the type of service of making them feel respected, making them feel loved, making them feel important, making them feel cared for, making them, reminding them that they're alive for a reason. It satisfies everything about me and within me because I, I think often of this world as in the movie Avatar, that tree, that was connected to everything and everyone has a little squiggly thing coming out from the back of their head. And when it locks into another living thing in the movie, they become in sync. I think about that, that that exists. I view life as that existing in real life. And there comes a moment whenever you're connecting with someone, you get that feeling that you're locked in in sync. And I believe it's real. The energies that lock in. So I believe when serving is, is, uh, it's doing what I'm supposed to be doing. That what Dr. King says, service is the rent I pay for living a healthy life. And I could have been born into any other body that could have was that could have been created with challenges, psychological challenges, physiological challenges set me back. I could have been born into a body in a part of the world that um that is stricken by war and famine and no rights. I I, I could have been born into a, a, a woman's body in Afghanistan right now. And that could be what I, my, my life has to deal with. And uh, But I was born into this. And it's it's always remembering that I'm grateful by, by helping serve and be there for others and, and always knowing at any moment I'm going to need some help myself. And I do need help. People help me all the time. And, and, and I think, I don't know, and you help me too. And the, and, and I think the most important thing is the, the learning the art of serving is that that's a, that's a learned behavior. It's a learned behavior. You learn that from someone. Mm -hmm. And I'm a strong believer is that you have to be a protege before you become a mentor. Mm -hmm. So who was your mentor? Who did you look up to that kind of created this, 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 this habit behavior to serve? Oh, shit. <laughs> did I get you? Yeah, I, I don't. I guess, you know. It was a, a development, like an evolutionary step. And I guess it has been for my parents, even though I never really looked at them. You know, they just kind of always established an ethos. And it was that that I knew I, I had to live under. It wasn't any of their one individual acts or set of acts. It was being in a military family, being in the Cub Scouts since age six, first grade through 18, and have uh, surrounded always by some, by my, my everyday work, 
my mother, my father's everyday work life and everyday life around me because I lived in military housing. Everybody's serving a purpose. Right. In the middle of the, it's all I saw, serving a purpose. And would hear about that, serving a purpose. From my earliest childhood, serving a purpose. And my father used to deliver these long monologues to me since I was like four. He would sit me, he'd sit me down. My father is uh, King Richard. Uh, my, I, I have the real King Richard as my father. And he'd sit me down and he'd say, you know, son, uh, come here. I have to tell you, you come from African kings and fighters and scholars and the, the br most brilliant, beautiful people. And you are here to be a protector of the light that surrounds humanity and What's always inherent, I remember these talks, what's always inherent to light are shadows and they're always gonna come creeping in and the shadows are gonna come because they're gonna be attracted to your light. That's the nature of shadows. They can't exist without light. And it's going to get hard and you're gonna have to remember what your charge is. He would speak to me like this and I'm four, four I, and, but it wasn't just once, and all the time, all the time. And so anybody hearing this, if you think your your boy doesn't, they're too young for you to have these talks, maybe they're too young if you say it once, but if you say it all the time, they'll remember this as an adult. I remember when my father, you've seen King Richard? Yes, so my I did. Fa <laughs> my father said to me, and my father's from Compton. So my father said to me, when I was in 2017, he came over to visit me when I was living in my, my apartment in Manhattan. And he was on his way back to California and he goes, Oh, he said he's sitting and I'm I'm just talking crap to him. And then finally he goes, Okay, son, cut the cut the shit. Uh, when are you running? And then I said, Running to where? And he said, You know what I'm talking about. And I said, What Congress? And he said, Okay, Congress, that's a start. And then I said, What do you mean start, Daddy? He said, well, you know, there's a gentleman who's been in Congress for 30 years and, or, uh, and, Senate, and Senate, and now he's running for president, Bernie. And then I said, Daddy, I would be more than happy if I was ever able to serve in the role of Congress and add value to our country. And then he looked at me and he said, okay, Congress is a start. Don't fuck this up. I've been playing. Mm. I've. I've planned this for you since I was six years old. Wow. Since he was six. Wow. I've planned this. Where did you hear this? I've planned this for you since you were six. Since I was six. I being my father, little six-year-old. So when he said, you're going to be, he said to Serena, you're going to be the best that, I, that ever played. You know why? Because I planned it that way. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that's really where a lot of it's. I guess that's where it did. But it wa it wasn't because of his actions. I kind of just took my own path, and then it, leading me to meet Kristen. I think that's where it was really forged. Right. That's where I started really understanding how how much a human could, how hard life can be on a human. At a, such a young age, 21 years old. Okay. So uh, that was kind of like, I, that time with her was like in the lab, being in the lab, preparing me and learning. And I think I became much, much more silly as a person during that time because I learned that what they can't, take from you during regardless of how any moment the heat of any moment the sadness the despair what they can't take from you is your choice to find a light in it and so it harms me sometimes because i'm too silly when people are trying to be serious and it doesn't mean i'm taking it any less serious but i've spent so many years of my life getting finding light finding some type of humor in misery in pain, in suffering, and it helped me get through 
boxing and all the years of having to cut so many weight and be miserable and, and just search for a joke. Where can I find a joke? Where can I find the humor in this? There's some humor here. Where can I find it? There's something that I can laugh at myself about. And I think that was it. But I feel my most, I know what to do. Like when I'm, I'll, I've said, I can speak, I feel completely comfortable talking to Jeff Bezos, not about business, but talking about a cause. And I've learned that about myself. And I think it turns some people off who are pretty bigwigs because un unless you have the power to make this cause go away all by yourself, we're on equal playing field. We're talking about a cause. And I know how to orchestrate that and how to make connections and find, I, just from experience, how to find ways to get through things. And sometimes it turns people off. Because sometimes I think it makes them have to reflect. It holds the mirror up so they see themselves because there's nobody caught up in the glamour of who they are. It's caught up in the glamour of the cause and what can you do. And if you can't, or if you say you can, you better. You're going to be held accountable. I don't care how many millions you have already. And if you can't, you got to go, go away. Come back when you're ready. We love it. We love it. But if you're not there, come on, man. No, and I love how you said cause because when you think about serve, you got to add cause to it because you're mm -hmm. serving. You have a purpose. There's a purpose. The purpose is your cause, and that's the mm -hmm. end game. And transitioning to the album, Raindrops, Changing Your Weather, uh, powerful album. I don't call it a motivational album. I know you call it an inspirational album, but I call it a breakthrough because mm -hmm. every track is a breakthrough moment, is that you're willing to open yourself up on each track of your breakthrough moments, whether it's the track, Wash Your Dishes, or create your patterns or round one. Mm -hmm. Those are different parts of your life where you had that aha moment. Like, you know what? This is this, I get it. And it's a part of my my lifestyle. And this is my commitment. And so I'm gonna live this every day where motivation can come and go. Mm -hmm. Motivation can be something that you have for like 10 minutes and then it go away. Mm -hmm. Breakthrough is like a lifestyle. It's something you wake up and that's that's a part of you. When you go to sleep, that's a part of you. And that's what I get through that. That's what I get through raindrops. Um, but like talk about the the early um the early stages of creating this 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 beautiful album. Thank you. And again, it's that you went out of your way to give me a chance to talk about this and feature this and that you care about me that much and that you care about the vision of for what this album hopefully can do, that you just care and doing this on your own to give me this space. I am so thankful. Oh, it's, man, I love it's you, so, man. I love you too. It's so kind of you, brother. No, no Thank problem. you. But answer the question. All right, all right. <laughs> Everyone to get that out. <laughs> um, so uh, got hit up by my brother, Sean Bracey. And Sean and I have gotten pretty close over the last six months. He hit me up and told me what he did. And I looked him up and he's been featured what he does on NBC and ABC. And he puts music, he puts music to albums, to, uh, to talks, to word, to the spoken word. And he, and then uh, he gave me an example of somebody's, and they didn't their talk didn't do anything for me, but I got I had the vision to see what he does, so I knew the rest was up to me. So I said, "How do you want to go about doing this?" And uh, I also made the decision I'm going to invest in my ability because I had to pay I would have to pay for him to do this. It was a few thousand dollars. But I'm going to invest in what I believe. And it's, it's time because I, I've often said if your your success or the metric they measure your effect effectiveness as a speaker is your ability to evoke emotion and connect with the person listening. I don't I don't know anybody alive. I'm sorry, I'll say this to you too, President Obama. 
I don't know anybody alive who could do it better than me. And I decided to do that and follow through with it. And so I, the process was I took my phone, I went into the living room, turned the lights off. I stood up, did it. I turned the, the camera towards me and I turned it, put it on video and I just went and I did it for 10 different tracks and recorded it. And then I emailed it to him and then he did his thing. And it sounds like I'm in a studio. <laughs> it's all professional, professional, but that's because of Sean and he is a genius. And I think I want anybody listening to any of these to know that, well, all I sent him was me spitting raw talk. There was zero music. There was zero anything, zero effects. It was just raw. And then he turned it into this. And on Instagram, it's it's Chon Goody. That's what his under uh, his thing is under. And G O O D I E. I gave him j words, and this dude's genius. And you know the one that I think is most incredible that stood out i got to watch his genius in real life in real time when i we first were going to do don't get comfortable in your pain make it acapella and i listened to it and i heard at some point he did add effects to it but it was still no no sound just effect to my words and i asked him could you make could you mess more with the effects please and then he texted me you know what i just got an idea i got you and from nothing, me just asking, he virtually kept it a cappella by not putting any music, but he had it raining the whole time with thunder. And I remember I said, Sean, just for me asking that, you saw this in your head? Just for me making that comment, you saw this. This is genius, especially with, with the name of the album. And... And with that story specifically, this was genius. And that's how we did it. And he's almost completely done with my demo speaking reel that he's put together. That And it's going to be shopped out to uh, the YouTube channel Motiversity. They have right. 2.7 million followers. And that's if they accept you, they take your tracks and they put a montage of clips together to it. And he's got all the outlets to... to try to to spit my stuff to get uh speaking gigs with this and wait till i send you this this uh the demo reel i've it's about 80 percent finished the one he sent me yeah. so he's still adding i'll i'll send it to you as soon as we're done yeah. and this is where we are so you take it now brother what you got <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's amazing too because the intro um is a powerful intro because you get a speaking engagement with the Delta Force, and you're like, "What am I gonna say to these brothers, like or sisters, like, like they're already motivated?" Like it's all all men are in Delta. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I you know I'm trying to be politically correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you know you at that moment you're like, "What am I gonna say to some to them?" Or like, if I had a chance to meet Jordan, what am I gonna say to Jordan? Like they're already motivated. But in that in that intro, you're like, I know my value. I know my story has a purpose. Hmm. And so this purpose, this raindrop that I'm about to give them, they're going to take something from it. So talk about that, like knowing your purpose, knowing your value in a room of people that's already motivated. That's why I call this album not a motivation album. It's a breakthrough moment album. Hmm. But from your perspective, talk about that. I I really enjoy being able to add value. And I believe first I'm going to be faking it if I'm sitting there and yelling at somebody how to get more or preaching to somebody or, or even inspiring somebody how to just get more out of themselves to achieve. And that kind of goes against my nature some because for me to achieve that's what starts everything with the word i and what i get for me and now i do understand the more you get for you you can help others with so there's nothing wrong with that it, it, it doesn't that's not the mindset i go in where the, i because i feel the more i do for others the more i'm gonna get <laughs> that's how i always think not the more i do for me the more i can help others right and 
And then I I don't I didn't feel that there was anybody out there and speaking to the people that have they've gone through life and not just trying to capture them right now to teach them how to get more out of because we're every moment of our lives. We weren't born an adult. We're always now years old. Whatever now is, that's who we are. Our body has aged, but our mind, it's now. It's always now. But we have all these experiences. And if you're going to sit me down and you're going to give me a mass talk about how to do this, how to be the dog, how to be the lion, and get more and I don't sleep, sleep. I'm not, I'm not comfortable sleeping. I, I work like all that talk. Right. It will, it will resonate for some and they may get fired up in that moment, but you're really rolling the dice. I think if it's going to stick when they leave, cause you haven't gone into them looking back at their own life to understand things that they've done themselves and why you haven't understood what, you know, if I'm if I'm putting the band aid on on a cut so that I can get back out there and not worry about getting infected, and as long as I keep that band aid on, I'm straight. But now I got to put this band aid on every day. But I haven't changed any of my acts that caused me to get cut and infected in the first place, or what's infecting me. Like that, it's getting to the root of it. Not just the end state, and it's interesting because I've spoken to one of my my childhood best friends who's pretty selfish by nature, <laughs> and he loves that, and I love him too. That Eric right. Thomas, he loves it, but that's all he wants because right. it's all about I, me, you know, climb to the top, get it all, take over the world. That's all, and that doesn't vibe with me because that's gonna run out and. And that's a big thing with washing your dishes that you're going to leave casualties. And eventually, when you are old, and I mean like old, old, and you have everything but have nobody, was it worth Like, don't tell me it was worth You know it wasn't. When you physically can't enjoy the things that you did because you're breaking down. And you, and it, you don't have that child, that relationship with them that you hope, and you don't, you never lived feeling ex as the, uh, the most comfortable you could ever be with your partner, and vice versa, and and always a little tense because you have to convince yourself or say things to yourself that no, don't worry, she, it's, it's, she'll be okay I'm, with what I'm doing. She'll be okay with what I'm doing. It's all right. She, she, can, she can deal with it. She knows I'm doing this for the family. Like these little things, but never addressing it. Yeah. And if you want to, you know, you want to sit me down and rev me up to go out and achieve when my home life is jacked up, what I, I'll, I'll sit there and listen to you tell me all that, but I got to go home to a life that's going to, be more important to me and and those emotions are gonna jack me up and take away all of the all of the lessons i you tried to impart on me for how to get more out of myself so it's like the root and the cause and you know no one talks about that track that i have on there give a feeling and that one's like the most <laughs> the most <laughs> important nobody brings that one up <laughs> It is. It like drives me crazy, and you know why? Because that's the one that's the scariest. Yeah. Give like be nice, be respectful to everyone, even if they're they're an a hole yeah. to me, or yeah. or make people feel important. What am I gonna get? Like, right. I, there's no intangible exchange that comes from it. Why would I do that? Right. And there's a lot of trust, and that, and you know what? I feel like that when I say that's the it'll change your life. You really get that sucker down. You really grasp that concept. Give a feeling to everybody you meet. Yeah. That they'll do every, you'll get everything back. Everything. And those are the investments. Those are the seeds. Cause you never know when you may need to call on somebody for help. Yeah. Or somebody may have an opportunity brought to them in their life and they remember you and think you may be good for them to share it with. 
That's so true. That is so true. A wise man told me, give gifts with no expectations. You're probably that wise man. And you're right. Now, that wasn't <laughs> for me. I'm giving a shout out without giving him a shout out, but giving him a shout out, he knows. But yeah, he taught me that lesson is that you give gift with no expectations. Mm -hmm. You give them to the gift, whether they open it today, they open it tomorrow, or they open it to, or they never open it. Don't put emotion to it. Give it to them. You did your part and let it go. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying earlier, if they if they need you, they'll reach out to you. Mm -hmm. You'll be there when you need them. But again, you don't get frustrated. Like, you know, I did this for this person. Like, what the hell is going on? Like, no, 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 no. You don't know what that person is dealing with. They may be dealing with some something. They're dealing with something that they don't know how to handle. Mm -hmm. Maybe they need time and space by themselves to figure it out. And when they do, they come back to you, they come back to you. If they don't, oh, well. But at the end of the day, you did your part. Mm -hmm. And what I love is that you mastered the art of vulnerability. And to me, I define vulnerability as an act of knowing our existence are interdependent. Mm -hmm. And that's important. That's Whether you one. talk to Jeff Bezos or Michael Jordan, by sharing your story, which is, and it's relatable. When it's relatable, you got them. You got them hooked because they, they can, they come back to you and say, you know what? I've been through that too. I know what you're going through. And so the conversation is like even in playing field, mm -hmm. you know, cause sometimes we live in a society where people are like, yeah, I'm on this level. It's like, no, you're not on that level. <laughs> you go through problems. You got dirty dishes like everybody else. Mm -hmm. You're right, baby. You're right. And there's that big smile. You put such a smile on it. You, you, know, you know, you said my line. You said it for my albums. It's making me feel proud of myself. You, you should, because it's a look. great album. It's a great album, man. You part Thank your you. heart and soul. And um, before we play this first track. Oh, no, I just want to do what you just did. Okay. You ready? Cause yeah. Because you, you got dirty dishes of your own. Yeah, I have dirty dishes. No, I look, I'm, I'm doing you. Okay. Look, ready? <laughs> look at my face. This is what you just did. No, because you got dirty dishes of your own. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's pretty pretty damn good, man. <laughs> Thank you. That big smile came up. And I love how you, you ended it with the paws. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, yeah, you, you got that. I'm, I'm scared now. I'm scared now. Cause you got me down to the T. <laughs> but going back to this great album, man. Talk about the first album, the first track I'm gonna play, uh, round one. Um, what was the inspiration behind round one? So I tied that on in my when I was in, when I was a uh, my senior year at West Point. I was having, we had practice, I was the captain of the boxing team and we had practice at 5.30 a.m. and then 4.30 p.m. every day. And then must've been taking 18 credit hours of classes that's, that year. And I was, snoo I was snoozing through the morning wake up and, getting late and being late to practice and I'm the captain of the team. And if you're late once, you could be having to walk back and forth for five hours on a Saturday between cone two cones that are about 200 meters apart, carrying your rifle in an uncomfortable uniform for five hours. For, and it happened to me. I got I, my, my coach let it slide. And then the next time, and I called up my cousin, Jay Vaughn, who was forced recon in the Marines. And now it's like Marine Special Operations. And I told him this, and I was like, I don't know what I don't know what to do because I I'm getting my time to get my work done. I eat and then practice and whatever. I'm so tired, and I'm just jacking me up that in the morning. And he said, we he said the line, well, you know, cause you got to take life one punch at a time. He said that, and it stuck that part. And then so what I like to do when I hear certain things that stick, I think about how I can put a story to it, a top message, and then it made it easy with our movie round one. And Sean's going to be starring in the concept. I've been noticing that I, when I've been pitching this to people over the last three years, and like I was like, you know, what you got to think of when it's when it's round one, it's brand new, and 
Think about when fighters in the corner before it starts, they're breathing fine. They haven't been hit yet. They're not worried. They're not concerned. They're confident. Like the whole rest of the fight's waiting out in front of them. Nothing else matters. Just right now where they are and they can think. And by saying that, I started realizing how that ties in to take life one punch at a time. And that's that phrase too, take life one punch at a time. When my, when Javon told me that, I was like, I'm getting riled up because I'm thinking about how many more days I of practice we have that I'm going to have to wake up. And if I can't, if I mess up now, I'm going to be so tired for months and months and months and it's overwhelming and I'm going to have to walk so many hours because I know I'm going to end up being late. I just, I, how do I get through this? And when he said, take a bunch of the time, said, stop worrying about all the other ones out there. I, doesn't mean they're not there, but then they all can't touch you. Yeah. And I thought about that once, about they all can't touch you as well. I remember when I was a child, I said to my father, daddy, because we were real big Bruce Lee fans. I said, daddy, do you think Bruce Lee could, could, could uh, beat a hundred people at one time, and then he was like, "Yeah, maybe I think so." And he said, "What?" Well, I said, "What about a million? He said, "Well, here's the thing, son: a million people can't touch him at one time." And that thought came on in. They can't, they got to wait to get to you. You deal with the one in front of you. So that's how round one all came about. Nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to play round one, and we're going to come back. Yeah, I haven't been hurt yet. You can think clearly. When it's round one, anything's possible. It's a brand new beginning. It's fresh. You just started. You may just be getting warmed up. But round one involves a choice you make at every single moment. Round one involves being present in the right now. You have a choice to make every single second that you're breathing. So let that second be round one. And not just do it once. You do it every second by being present. Understanding that what you did, you can't change. What's happened to you, you can't change. Understanding that what you did, you can't change. You just finished your 11th climb and you go back in the corner and you look like you just fought every bit of the 11th round. You're bleeding, you're gasping for air, you're hurt, you can't think, you're scared. You don't want to come out for that club. As you look over, your opponent looks like he's just starting. Or she's just starting. And you're like, wait, we've been in the same fight? How do I look like this? What I've experienced. You look like you're just getting going. That's a scary feeling. But what if that person grasped the concept of round one? I'm just starting. I'm gonna say out loud these things. I'm gonna breathe the trauma out of me. I'm gonna say it. Say it. Say it out loud. Start your life over the moment you need it. It's called taking life one punch at a time. Start from round one. The moment you start committing to that piece, that you're brave enough to say your pain. I say mine all the time. I cry all the time. I get it out. Start your round one. Do not the best you can. And I'm preaching this to myself as I'm saying it. So I'm not drill sergeant you telling you what the answer is. I'm preaching to myself at the same time because I still fall short. Do your best. Don't focus on all the punches out there. You can't change them and they all can't touch you at once. But I assure you, as long as you don't remain still, you're in the fight. That was round one. That was fire. That's one of the ones I always listen to. Um, round one reminds me uh, from the Rocky by, by a Rocky movie from 2006 
where he had the conversation with his son when he said life is not about sunshine and rainbows. It's about how hard you get and how you get up. And I kind of got that vibe all the time I listened to that album. I don't know if you see the similar uh, parallels that I do, but that's what I get when I listen to round one. I get it. I, now that you brought that up, I can understand. Cause I know that speech down cold. So I get it. And that's a re- it's very humbling and flattering that you would, that speech, because when Rocky gives that, that's an all time speech right there. All time, like to apply anywhere in the world, to anyone in any time, in any moment in the nation going through crap. And it was such brilliant writing. I memorized it when it first came out so and never even thinking about that for this it is very special to me that you said that so thank you no it's a very special 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 um track because anyone can get something from it just listening mm-hmm. to it um paying attention to it um you can get something from it let's talk about the next track i have set up create your patterns talk about the the, the, the message behind create your patterns. So I remember I once heard, uh, I was listening to, I read this book and they were talking about, everyone always thinks if I, they say, if you want it, you think it, it will happen. And, and I hear, I bet you've heard in life all the time, man, that's just BS. Cause I, I want to be a millionaire. Where, where is it? I think about it every time. And so that book talked about the, the that middle part of, of, uh, I wrote creating patterns, but they, I think they said your, your habits. I, I made it my own by saying, create your patterns. And, uh, it kind of takes away. I used to tell people, you know, when we talk about flukes, but if you look at patterns, they kind of explain away flukes. For example, if you were to say somebody's going out walking their dog and they get struck by lightning, and you say, what are the odds of that? But let's also look at their patterns. Where were they walking their dog? It was, was it an area that would make sense for lightning to strike if there was a thunderstorm? Yeah. If I'm the type of person that loves animals, I'm going to have a dog. And being a good dog uh, caretaker, I'm going to walk my dog, no matter what the weather is. When my baby has to go out, he has to go out. It's rain or th- he has to go out. I'm also the type that's going to assume that lightning's never going to strike where I am. That's my own independent universe. I love dogs. I'm going to buy a dog. I'm going to walk it. I live in the open country area because I love the smell of nature around me. And I want a lot of flat space for my dog. That's one universe. Another universe, you have the weather. You have independent on its own. Thunder comes and the right, the right content of moisture in the air and, and humidity and the wind, it's gonna create lightning storms. And lightning, nature of it, it strikes in open plains. Now, if lightning on its own struck someplace, you would never say, what are the odds of lightning striking there? Because you know that's what lightning does. So independent, you have two sets of patterns that are created by, by the ways that things operate and they intertwine two universes. And it makes a fluke accident happen. But when you peel the layers back, it was always going to happen because they were they those are their patterns. Yeah. And since we're not we don't live in a world we can control, our patterns may be subjected to somebody else's patterns. That's right. So that's a talk I'd, I'd given before. And then so my tr- original track, I told a much longer story about what I had to do to become the, wor- the the patterns I had to create to become the world military champion. He just took that one bit, I guess it would have been too long and said my pattern, but I told the story. And so this, each track on my album has a whole story I can just give for a talk. If someone were to invite me, I'll give you a 45 minute talk on that story from it. And the, the big parts of that story, I was at, I just I graduated West Point. I found myself qualifying for the Olympic trials within six months against, I, I went to the Olympic trials in 04. Andre Ward was competing at that, <laughs> like those guys. And I just started boxing in college for you anyway. So I'm, I'm there 
I fall short and then I have to go to the officer basic course for four and a half months to learn how to be a field artillery officer. So it's a military, Fort Sill, Oklahoma during the summer military school. And the World Military Championships camp started three days after I graduated from there in Colorado Springs. And said that the World Military Championships is like an Olympics for the militaries because most countries, their military are their Olympians. Yeah. So we were hosting it in the U.S. And Coach Abdullah, who is the coach of the Army boxing team, world-class athlete program, and four-time Olympic coach, and he had just come back from his second Olympics coaching, he called me up and he was like, uh, no, he didn't leave yet. The Olympics were that summer. So for the, that was his second Olympics, the Athens one. He called me up while I was in Oklahoma and he goes out, I was a lieutenant and he, uh, he goes out T. It's one of the, you know, I don't want you competing in this tournament. And then I said, why coach? He said, you need to understand these, this is not the Olympic trials. Even these are Olympians. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a lot of athletes coming back from Athens, Greece to compete at this. We're hosting it in our own country in the U S we want to put on a good show and not look embarrassed. And you're in a military school right now. Nobody ever comes out of a military school in shape. I don't want you to get hurt. And those were the magic words. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> that's like, and it's funny because I, but this guy has been coach of the year two times already, USA Boxing Coach of the Year. And to think of my my arrogance, my stubbornness to say to him, okay, coach, I hear you. Thank you. I earned my spot. I'm going to be competing. Right. Do you have anything else, coach? <laughs> <laughs> to say that. And then what pattern, then I was like, this is going to suck because I'm at this school. We, all my guys that go out drinking at night after they have one heavy bag on the whole base and that's it. And it's in a gym that's around 110 degrees during the summer because it's upstairs. And I'm now 172 pounds and I have to be 152. No, I was 100 and, yeah, no, 169 pounds. Okay. And I have to be 152. Uh, no, I was 172. That's right. I have to be 152 to box in. And coach said nobody shows up in shape. So in, in order, and I knew that I would not stand a chance if I showed up to the camp and tried to use the camp to lose the weight because mm. I was so far behind in my experience level, now going against Olympians, that I need to have weight be the last thing I worry about so I can focus on getting better and learning, not dying from making weight so those last two months of the four and a half i shut down shop i did not go out any longer after class i asked my commander when we had to do our pt runs in the morning can i put my plastics sauna suit over my my uh, army uh not gym my army uh, physical training uniform and he did me a favor because that's not allowed Right. But I told him what unit I was going into and why. Right. And then I started living. I got a scale, put it in my room, and I started living life uh, attached to that scale, right. partitioning the fluids I was drinking to an extent, the types of foods, everything. I shut it down. And in those two, and I showed up September 15th to WCAP walking around at 155 pounds. Wow. And in a school where they all they had a heavy bag there, I would drag myself to that heavy bag and hit it three or four times a day for about 45 minutes. Just no one coaching me, not even having the skill level to know what types of things to practice on it like I do now, right. but just hitting it. It's like banging your head against a wall over and right. over because I needed to lose that weight. And because coach said nobody shows up out of a military school in shape and because coach said i don't want you to get hurt lt right and because coach said we don't want to embarrass our country like, saying these <laughs> <words>. <laughs> like embarrass our country right so i i did i had to create patterns to get in shape and that let me tell you was the hardest training wow. camp i had ever been in once we started camp and i thanked god 
that I got myself in that shape and that I was that age because I did not have to worry about weight the whole time, but I had to pay attention to my weight, but I didn't have to lose any. I just had to make sure I sustained because when you're, you have to be 152, that's one workout and just, and if you're really 155, so you're not dying for thirst even at 155. Right. If you're really there, that's like your base 55, 56. That's right. one workout, and then you don't eat and right. you don't drink, and then you right. get on the scale. So that's not hard. And I did it, and that that story is what I told her. And then I be, ended up becoming the world champion of all the militaries in the world, and I was the first in 12 years, the first. And I was the least experienced. I had seven fights outside of college going into that. And my teammates had like hundreds of fights. They were members of the, they were the all Marine Corps champions and the Air Force and the Navy. They had hundreds. And I ended up beating the semis, this guy from Morocco, who I found out after the fight just came back from fighting in Athens, Greece. Wow. And then in the finals, this kid from Uzbekistan, who was the under who was the world champion that year, he won the world championships for 19 and under. Wow. There are only two Americans that have ever done that. And there's only and the only known name is Riddick Bo for the common common name. The other guy was a, never lived up to his potential as a professional, but it was a world beater as an amateur. Only two ever did it. And in my 10th fight out of college, I draw this guy from Uzbekistan. He's gone on to win silver in the world championships. He went to the Olympics twice after that. And I draw him and I beat him in the first. And I got to watch my the flag go up and, and the Star Spangled Banner play. And then I was – and that, like, blasted me onto the USA boxing amateur scene. And I – if I had not – created those patterns i would know what i would not have been prepared for that moment i wouldn't wow. have and that's what i did and i suffered like i suffered but i knew what i wanted so since i that's what i wanted then i had to create the patterns to get it or give me the opportunity to be in the have the opportunity to get it and it, it led you to that opportunity and you took advantage of it. Yeah. And so right now, we're going to play Create Your Patterns right now. If you think it, it will happen. If you think it, it will happen. And I know that if you live your life long enough to see many things that you thought not happen, and you think to yourself, what am I doing wrong if everybody keeps preaching this and it's not working out for me? I got the connecting piece for you. The patterns you create are what allow your thoughts to turn into opportunities. The patterns you create give birth to those opportunities. And the patterns you create must be in alignment with your thoughts. That is the only way you're going to give yourself the best chance to give birth to the opportunity. I became the first American in 12 years to become the world military boxing champion. I became world champion because I created the patterns that were in alignment with my thoughts and what I wanted. And when that opportunity came, I was in shape for the moment. Do you hear me? You have to be in shape for the moment when that opportunity comes, figuratively, and in some cases, literally. And because I created patterns that were in alignment with what I said I wanted, I was in shape for the opportunity that my patterns gave birth to. So I said I wanted something, and when I fast forwarded the clock, I got it. But because I created my patterns, create your patterns. That's the middle piece to have your thoughts turn into what you want and remain. I became not only a world champion that I get to have now for the rest of my life, 
I became the USA Boxer Athlete of the Month that month. And then I became the United States Olympic Committee Athlete of the Month runner-up because I created those patterns. Because what I wanted involved choices that created patterns that gave birth to the opportunity to give me what I wanted. That is your raindrop. Create your patterns. What was it about that one that made you single that one out to play here is? What made me single that one out was because that track reminded me of Buster Douglas, creating your patterns, right? Mm. He created the patterns of beating Mike Tyson, right? Mm. He goes into that fight. People think he's not going, like he, he's going to be knocked out in the first round. And what happens? He put Mike Tyson on the desk. Mm -hmm. why because he created those patterns he created that habit like again a lot of people think of his career like oh just watch this and that but in that moment in time where he got the opportunity to fight mike tyson he took full advantage of it and a lot of people said well you know mike tyson didn't pr train properly this and that that's on him yeah <laughs> but Buster douglas in that moment in time when he knew that he was going to fight Tyson in Japan, he prepared mm -hmm. and it proved itself. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, that, that out, that, that track kind of, that kind of, kind of parallel to each other, because again, it's about the preparation. And like you were talking about earlier, when your um, coach was saying, Hey, um, sit this out. Uh, I don't want you to be embarrassed. I don't want you to embarrass us. So just sit this out. And you're like, nah, no, nah, I'm gonna prepare. I'm gonna prepare, and you put the work in, mm -hmm. and by putting that work in, you were able to be ready for the moment, and you took advantage of that moment. Because if you sat out, you would have regret not being there, because you would have been like, "What if? Coulda? Shoulda?" You're like, "No, nah, fuck that. I'm not gonna listen to my coach. I know I can do this. I'm gonna put the work in," and. You proved them wrong. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and so let's go into this last track, which is my all-time favorite track. Wash your dishes. Talk about wash your dishes. I've often said and i've lived this for a while and it's caused great strife for me over the years that there's a difference between apologizing to somebody for what you did versus apologizing the, for the fact that something you did brought about an unintended emotion to somebody else and there's a difference. You're not saying that you were wrong necessarily, perhaps, but you are acknowledging that it affected somebody in a way you didn't intend it to. And it especially if it brings them away, that's not pleasant. So it brings them grief or sadness. And apologizing is not weakness. Weakness is being afraid to apologize. And I've looked many different types of relationships I've had and times, you know, I'm so hyper-focused on these visions I have that especially family members of my own, I've pushed away at times and said not so nice things because I felt that they may have not, they don't see my vision, what I'm trying to achieve the same way and they're getting in the way and not recognizing and remembering that they care about now maybe not all of my family but some of them care about me and have and that's the only reason they're giving advice there's nothing in it for them and those ones especially where it's coming from and the relationships that i've had especially while i was in iraq 
in 2018 and reflecting on all the different relationships, romantic relationships I've had and key points where I might as well have been treating them or speaking to them like they're the enemy. When that was, that is not, they were not looking at it for that reason at all for whatever, they were not saying what they were saying with that type of energy. I was doing it because I felt that my ultimate dream was at that moment being compromised or an uh, a vision that for many years it was toxic professionally to try to find a cure for paralysis. So dreams I've had, uh, relationships I've had, had to suffer during that time and take hits and it brought out the nasty in me to them and they didn't deserve that at all and so i always like to think how can i put a story something catchy that makes people remember and i i get a lot of satisfaction out of washing dishes because i'm able to see in like real time me, my effect on something to make it clean i like i like ironing and i like <laughs> sweeping and mowing raking like i i'm seeing accomplishment right, right. there and i was I was sitting on the couch and I was looking over at the sink and there were a couple of dishes that I hadn't got to and I just kept pushing them off. So I was like, nope, it's just me here right now. So I can do it later. And I was, and then it just hit me at once about, I got to wash these damn dishes. <laughs> 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 and, and, uh, if I, I'm going to need those to eat again. I'm going to need them and I'm not going to go out and just keep buying new dishes. I only have a certain amount. Those are mine. <laughs> and those suckers are helping me eat and they're dirty. And then that just, that's the track came just like that. And, and, and it's a powerful track and we're about to play it right now. Actually my favorite track on the album, wash your dishes. Wash your dishes. Wash. It's kind of warm. What does that mean? Let's play this right now for you. Dishes are the key thing in your life that help support you get what you want. They help support your dreams. They often don't ask for anything. They're with you because they love you. They're with you because they care about you. Your dreams are your food. Your dreams are what you need to feel whole and complete. Your dreams are what you put your heart and your soul into and your focus and your energy. They are your goals and your passions. They are yours. And your dreams are those people, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your wife, your girlfriend, your friend, your stranger. Anybody that's been there for the ride to help you get there. Oh, we're going after those dreams, whether we get them or not. I'm telling you right now, the people that are supporting you, those dishes to help you eat your meal, they're getting dirty. They're getting dirty and dirty, and the more they love you, the more dirty they're going to get because they're going to stick with you. You gotta go back and wash them. You gotta make them clean. Every single person in your life that's been there with you to help you and ask for nothing in return, don't deceive yourself. They got dirty emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. They did it though because they love you. You know what happens if you don't go back and wash those dishes? If you don't help return those people to home? You're planting landmines. Landmines. You know what happens if you don't go to your wife after 20 years of being in a career where she supported you? And you don't go back and restore her, let her know how much you love her, thank her, care for her so that you could achieve. You 
one day that landmine's going to blow up. It's going to blow up. That dish will break. That dish will get sick. If you never washed it. And when that dish went to help you get your dreams, that dish wants to know that you care. Don't load it onto a dishwasher. Don't load it onto somebody else to help care for it and clean it and restore it. It was there for you every step and never asked for anything. Never. Go back to it and make it whole. Wash it. Show that you care. That's all it wants to see. Try eating off that dish again without ever cleaning it. Try it. See how good that meal tastes. Tell me if you get sick. You want to be that daddy who was so busy at work throughout his child's whole childhood that when that child's an adult and you're the daddy asking for more time, that child says to you, well, daddy, where were you when I was younger? Because you never went back to restore your child. To explain why you had to be away for so long and to try to find a way to make time. It will come back. It will. It will change your life. If you don't wash that dish, that's not a change you're going to want. It's just a matter of time. It's a landmine. You know people in your life that have blown up on you for things you've done while they tried to help you throughout the way. You know people that have blown up on you. You could have went back to them. You could have said thank you. You could have empathized. Say, I understand the sacrifice you're making to help me and I thank you. That's all they ever need from you. Go back and wash your dishes. Make it a habit. It will save not only your life and your relationship. Wash your dishes. Mm -hmm. Motivation for the motivated. Motivation for the motivated. Wash your dishes. If you get something from this great conversation, I'm back. I'm back. This, uh, from this great album. Hello. Yep, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? I'm here. You here? Oh, uh, we lost Boyd. Hopefully, he comes back on, but. Raindrops, Change Your Weather is a phenomenal album. And he's back with us. The man, the myth, boy, it is back with us. <laughs> if you don't, if you get something from this great conversation that me and my brother boy have, is wash your dishes. Wash your stinking ass dishes. Don't leave your stinking ass dishes in the sink, as well as take your trash out. <laughs> take your trash out. <laughs> mm -hmm. you're right you're right bro, baby bro that is my favorite track the reason why is just the power of acknowledgement you know that takes five seconds to acknowledge mm -hmm. the people that helped you along your way um we live in a society where everyone talks about their uh uh man-made i don't believe in that on along of your journey someone helped you whether it was a teacher, whether your family, someone help you by, by saying you're man-made that denies the people that played a role in your success. Mm -hmm. So that power acknowledgement, talk about that, bro. Well, you know, that's also, I think it's a part of alignment of give a feeling. What, what do you want people to remember you? What story do you want people to just tell when they reflect on their encounters with you and, and their journey with you. What story? Do you want to be that person that is spoken of as he was so grateful and made me feel cherished and valued and I would do anything for that man again? Do you want to be that? Do you want he he saw that I got hurt. He didn't mean it, but he saw I did and he and he reached out to me because he recognized that something he did or she did hurt hurt me do you want do you want that to be the story that people tell of you and that's a big part of 
recognizing uh, when you wash them, recognizing that make making that effort, what it, how the dividends it will pay off, it will allow you to be completely free around that person the next time you see them. And I think that you have to convince yourself that everything's cool if you've never washed them when you see them. You have to not even let it entertain because I don't, I don't think that it's human nature to know that you caused something to somebody else and to see them again and just to think that they were okay with whatever negative emotion you brought to them and all is cool. I think you have to convince yourself and have an inner monologue to convince yourself as to why they're cool. They'll be all right. They're still my boy. You're not feeling natural around them. You're not, you feel most free when you can feel most vulnerable. When you feel most vulnerable is when you feel like you can be yourself, completely yourself, ex not even just accepted, love for it. And when you do something that rubs somebody a certain way, and even if they love the hell out of you and they stick with you, when they go home at night by themselves, it's going to echo in their head, whatever the encounter was. And eventually, and especially if it's a pattern and it keeps building up, it's going to take from, from the, the relationship you all have as one. And you don't know when that day may come that it blows up. And when that shit blows up, like, oh my God, especially if you've never seen it coming because you never bothered to stop to think you were so quick on projecting to what can I get? What can I get? What can I get my way? I want this. I want that. It's never going to be worth it. it it's never, I, uh, it's never going to be worth it because as long as we're all alive, we break down. As long as we're alive and alive long enough, so if you're still alive, you're going to break down. And the best thing that's going to matter to you is companionship. And when you have people that can hold on to that venom because their life, no matter how sweet you may have been, they remembered how arrogant and stubborn you were when they were bleeding and you didn't want to recognize it. They're not going to want to spend their time with you. That's so true, man. That is so true. So why should people listen to this album? Because they love you. And if they love you, they'll listen to it. Right? Because Ish is one of the most lovable human beings I've ever met. And it's why everybody takes to his light. And so if Ish says, you got to listen to this, please, I don't need to say anything more. Oh, wow. You're putting the pressure on me, man. You better believe it, baby. <laughs> I totally parlayed that on over. <laughs> you did, man. That's why you have, uh, 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 if you ever get into doing Sports Center, I'm just saying you would be perfect for it. <laughs> I anchor for Sports Center or something like you. That'd be the perfect job for you. But before we end the podcast, I said, why, I was, why, li I was, why listen to it? Yes. Because you got nothing. First, you have nothing. You lose the time. It's 42 and a half minutes in your life from everybody that's going out of their way to send me messages. It's nobody's talking about it like it's a motivation, traditional motivational speaking album. They're saying this is different than anything I've ever heard. It's different. It's different. If I'm going, it's, it's, it's like it's fire inside of me for, because it gets your brain thinking. So you do, what's great about it is when you have an album, you don't have to listen to the whole thing. You just check out one. And if it makes you curious about another one, check it on out. It's, it's going to evoke great emotion. That I promise. At least one track on there will find its way to you and evoke great emotion. And I agree too, man, a hundred percent is the great thing about this album, overall album is I love how you balance emotion with a lot logic. Cause when you listen to some motivation album, some people are so um, in, in, in drenched in emotion that you don't get the logic out of it. This, you get the balance of the 
of both. We get your passion, but we understand the reason why, and it makes sense. And I think that's important when you create, I don't call it a motivation album. I call it a, a breakthrough album. The reason why, because each track is a breakthrough moment in your life mm -hmm. and you're willing yeah. to share it and be vulnerable and be open about it and be honest about it. And I think that's the most important thing is that you're honest of how you feel and you don't care what people think about you, but you're open to, Hey, this is what I dealt with. This is my feelings. This is how I see things. This is how I handle it. And that's a beautiful thing. Thank you very much. My mother had a hard time listening to the say it out loud joint because she said she felt it was it was too forced. And I saw my response to her and it gave me peace. I said, well, not every track's meant for everyone, mommy. And I think she appreciated that too, because there was no argument back. And I'm aware not, and I'm aware of my mother's background. And I'm aware, I have a pretty good idea who would take to that track. And I would never have thought it would have been my mother. And she responded accordingly with it. Because that's, that's probably the one where I have, my mo that's the one where I'm, I'm playing, I think for mankind, like mankind, for how we can get through the days to, to please uh, do this, just do this, please. And that's probably my rawest emotion out of all the tracks on there. Honestly, my, my, I think the one is the, the last one. Don't get comfortable in your, your pain. In your pain. Yeah. I think that's your most vulnerable track. Because mm -hmm. in that one, you kind of you pour your your soul into that one. Because that one's like a ten minute track. Mm -hmm. That's the long one on there. So you pour a lot in there. So I'm thinking when you were done, I think you kind of took some time and you 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 shed some tears after you did that. Yeah, I sure did. Because every single track here, I had to relive to get it out. And you know, that's the one that I believe may be one of the most useful or valuable but it also means that that's the one i would have to speak about the most if this album ever blows up and i have to revisit it every time and that sucks so i had to make a decision do i believe this is worth it with that track to share this story knowing that it could create a world where i have to speak about this frequently and because that tracks about a specific story moment in, of our story, but all the emotions of my story with her come out every single time, all of the pain and all of the happy, everything, everything. Oh, I, I hope, I just hope that some, it gets into the ears of somebody that has that ability to, that they're the raindrop themselves to get it out. But, in order to get to them, I'm going to need other raindrops, That's right. such as you, spreading this out. And I just hope eventually it finds and gets in that ear and it, it's fall, and that someone listens to all of it and at least one track makes sense for them where it's like, I need this, this needs to be heard. And this is definitely something that you, it's definitely to be heard. And then also hopefully this can save someone life because that's the one thing too, is that you do work with veterans mm -hmm. and the tragedy of the, the of a veterans um, committing suicide. Mm -hmm. So if a veteran who's on that verge, listen to this album and take something from it where they're like, I'm going to take a step back. I'm not going to do it. Then you did your job with this album. Yeah. How wonderful of a day that would be. That's right, man. So before we go, what else is in store for Boyd? This movie. That's the big one. This uh, round one for we're going to have, we should have the teaser it's this month. And then we have, I think maybe eight or 10 different sources to send it to that are where it's going to be coming. And each independently has the ability to galvanize 
the funding needed and the, and the people needed to make it. So we only need one of them to believe in it when they see the teaser. And that's the next most upcoming thing in this movie. Again, is dedicated to veteran suicide and mental health. And we have a Be Heard camp, social media campaign that I this year should be launched in, ju- in conjunction with this movie that you've helped tremendously out with, brother. And those are the two big things uh, most immediate upcoming. And then also, what about you personally? Like just just for yourself instead of other people. Oh, I. Have uh, or is that beautiful? Too early? I've no. Nah, I, <laughs> I have the most beautiful woman for me in my life uh, now. Been together almost four months, and. We've been, we stay together almost every day for the last two months. And she, she is so, I get to experience, I've told her this the other day, I said, I said, I think I get to experience what other people get from me when I'm with you because you drench me with affection and sweetness and love and laughter all the time. And I feel like I annoy people with that sometimes, but they just keep taking it and I'm getting it why they do. Because when you, I feel how much you love me. I feel how much you care about me and how much patience you have for me. You have so much patience for me and my ways. And I know I can be difficult and you are, this is what I always dreamed it would be like when we're following the steps to getting engaged and then getting married in a family. Like this is what it was like when you were with that person and you knew that I've never experienced and it being healthy and she's brilliant. Johns Hopkins getting her master's in public health and she's a director at a healthcare uh, consulting company. And she worked with kids with special needs from, from 14 to 22 years old. And she has this beautiful pit bull Labrador, Smokey Jack, who <laughs> she gave me like a family right off the bat between wow. her and Smokey Jack. And she loves Cobra Kai. I got her to watch every episode and she thinks it's great. And I walk in sometimes and she just has Warriors games on by herself sitting alone or she'll be watching Mike Tyson, do- Mike Tyson documentaries and she thinks that Roy Jones Jr. is a common name that everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> she, bro, she is, is, bro it, this is amazing. And it goes back to the, was it the, the second track, Creating Patterns. You mm-hmm. created this moment. For everything you went through from as a child to a champion to helping other people, now you have someone in your life that's helping you. So you you made that happen. Thank you. Thank you. And she lets me kiss her as much as I want. That is awesome. (laughs) She lets me kiss her and be as cute and silly and playful and she lets me squeeze her as tight as I can into my body and she doesn't doesn't complain. <laughs> it's just wonderful. <laughs> and I, I just see the glow in your face, man, and you're happy. You're in a place of just you're in a great place. And Thank that's you. what you just and it's just a great feeling just to see you, just to talk to you, just to just support what you're doing, man. It's amazing. And again, anytime you got anything going on, you're always welcome to come on, jump on, shoot the shit, or just 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 have a good conversation because it's just about being vulnerable and sharing thoughts, thoughts, ideas, emotion, and just being there for one another. And that's what yeah. it should be all about, man. I agree, brother, and thank you. And I don't ever seem to have outside of a smile to anything to offer you for that, your I, endeavors. Your, 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 your smile is currency here. <laughs> Your smile is currency. If you want to put that on a shirt, my <laughs> smile is currency. I'm that's cool a good, with that. That's that's great. My smile <laughs> <is currency. laughs> that's a good one, bro. I love you, man. 
I I wouldn't. This is the best start of 2022 on this podcast is spending time with you. And that's why oh. I reached out to you to do this because I wanted to do this. And then also I wanted to promote the album because it is a great album and people need to go out there and listen to it. Where can people find this album? Sure thing. They can go to Spotify. They can go to Apple Music. They can go to iTunes. They can go to Amazon Music. They can go to the app called Pep Talk. They just type my name in, Boyd, B-O-Y-D, and then Melson, M is in Mary, E-L-S-O-N. And the name of the track is Raindrops. If you just type Raindrop, it's Raindrops colon Change Your Weather. If you just type Raindrops in, there's going to be a lot of stuff that comes up. You will find it eventually. But you can go straight there by typing in Boyd Melson with an M as in Mary. Each track is also on YouTube. If you type in my name and then Raindrops. And they have all 10 of them. 10 tracks, 42 and a half minutes. That's right. So people out there, if you're going to see it on YouTube, give them a bunch of likes on there. Share it. Share it with your mama. Share it with your grandma. Share it, share it with your daddy. Share it with people you don't like. Just, just share it. Just share it. Support <laughs> it. Um, and then also, all those links will be in the description below. Again, everyone, Happy New Year. Brother, Happy New Year to you. I love yeah, you. I, I can't love wait you to. I can't wait till the trailer comes out because I'm going to share it with everybody. everybody. <laughs> You've been talking about this for almost two years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm excited about it. I can't wait for it to come out. I just can't wait for the next chapter. Boyd, <laughs> you, you're getting married and having some babies, man. So I'm wait. waiting for that next chapter, man. That's my dream. It's going to happen again. You create. You created the pattern. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. And we're all out. right. Love you. Peace out.